beautiful people. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate that you're here. It's a beautiful sparkling day outside and I'm hoping not to get too many interruptions from beyond the hedge because we have work to do. First of all, I have my Epidendrum Stanfordianum here looking a little bit shabby. We're going to address this orchid because as you can see right here, I have a lot of desiccated pseudobulbs. Ooh, that doesn't look good. And that means there's a lot of dead roots in this pot because I treated it with copper, trying to get rid of all the spotting that it came with from the nursery a while ago. And uh, yeah, it's growing new roots right there. So this is the time to go in because the new growth is looking remarkably well, and I'd like to keep it that way and restart this orchid and see if we can't in future plump up the pseudobulbs because we've got a new root system going. I also have my Epicatante, sorry, let me correct that, Guariciclia Kiyoguchi Happy Field. And this one is still from the olden days when I got her with the old support <laughs> and old dirty leka. And I've been waiting to get roots on her growing to be able to clean this pot up completely. It'll be the first time since I got her like three years ago. So I'm really pushing the margin. I do have a small sheath growing and I really, really want her to actually bloom, but I'm not going to sit this one out until next year again. The roots are already a little bit too long for my liking, but yeah, things happen. Can't always get to the pots in time. So we need to address this one as well. And thank you very much once again for joining me. I will be discussing certain things as I see them. First, I'm going to address Epidendrum stanfordianum because I really want to get that pot cleaned up. I'm sure there's a lot of death in there. So let's get going. I've got to drain out the calcium and magnesium that I have in here, the seaweed. I mean, yes, there are dead roots in the pot, but it's just one of those things that I like to do just in case I'm wrong, you know, and if there's a live root, then Hopefully it can also benefit. Okay, let's get you out. Taking it the other way, away from the root tips. Try not to aggravate them because of the abrasions of the leka. Let's see what we've got. Ew, 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 and more ew. Right. Oh, yeah. Lot of ew. Not good. Yeah, the copper thing that was my disaster for 2021. And I've since wiped the leaves off from it several times. It's very difficult to get off. Now, hang on a second. Let's not get too excited here. Uh, yeah, dead, dead, dead. Hmm. All dead. Ooh, very dead. <laughs> Uh, but there is something here that feels firm, so I've got to be careful. Right. Let's make this easy for future reference with regards to cleaning leka. Not get ahead of ourselves. See what we can salvage. Right. Well, this is obvious back here. Let's go with that. Start where we know what we're doing, what we can see. You're very dead. Not a good word, is it? Especially when you're addressing roots. Too many times saying dead. Um, <laughs> right. But I was waiting. Oh, these are okay. They look tired and shriveled and abused because of the copper that they were in. And oh my goodness. And all the flushing I did. And copper kept dripping into the pot. Yeah, not good. Lesson learned, lesson learned. If you haven't seen the video about my 2021 root debacle because of the copper, yeah, I will put a card up, link it in the description below. You have no idea how happy this makes me to get into this pot. I've been eyeing new roots now since, well, the beginning of the season because she did try. On one of my patio tours, I showed her with new roots and I was all excited <laughs> and then enter copper yeah how are we doing here oh gosh feels firm but it's dead well that's gonna really increase and improve the aeration in the pot I would say 
all these new roots growing will have plenty of plenty of oxygen. <laughs> suppose that's a good thing. I'm reaching here, but yeah. These are tough roots. Chunky. Nice. And I got ahead of myself and just cut off a good one, even though it looked bad. You can see that green there. Yeah. Slow down, slow down. Don't be too excited. Now I can't see if that was in focus, but yeah, I hit a good root. Yeah. As I'm cleaning up, check this out. There's still copper residue on the beads that were right at the bottom. And where the roots touched, they died. Clearly. Oh dear. So even all the flushing and the cleaning that did nothing as far as getting the copper out of the system. But we still have the orchid. She's fighting, she's still alive. You see these roots are viable so stressed, so shriveled, but they're still alive. They will at least do something in the meantime. See that spotting there? Look at that. There's some even down in here. That is still copper. Right. So what went horribly wrong? Well, I usually have my copper as a fungicide for years and years and never had any problems. Except this time, I took the doses a little bit more higher because I was expecting torrential rain according to forecast. So I dosed a little bit higher than I normally would beyond manufacturer's recommendations. <laughs> the rain didn't come. And the second day, the rain didn't come. So there was no flushing out any of what I had doused my orchids with. And this is the result on one of them. I will do an update on all the others that were affected because they all responded differently. Right, let's get the Kiyoguchi Happy Field before we situate them into their new pots and have a look-see what's going on in that pot. Yeah, feels firm. After three years, of course, there's roots in here, but that doesn't mean they're all alive. Just have to be careful of the ones that are still alive, especially my new ones. I wanted to split her in the back here, take all this off, but seeing as she is, you know, in sheath or trying to grow a sheath, I really, really want this orchid to bloom. I love the fragrance. One of my favorite fragrances of the entire orchid collection that I have. But seeing what I'm seeing here now, see how deep those, those pseudobulbs are? Yeah we're probably going to have to take her off. And if we forfeit a blooming, that would be a shame. But the orchid comes first. And I had some slow release fertilizer in here. Interesting. No, small itty bitty lecker. Residue lecker. I don't know if you can see that. I don't dare bring it close to the camera because I don't want the lecker to be falling all over the floor. And then a curious puppy grabs it and chokes on it. So we have some death in the back. That's to be expected, but it's not all that bad. But it's definitely high noon. If she blooms for me, I will be ever, ever so grateful because like I said, this fragrance, oh, the Issei Miyake perfume. There is no other way to compare this fragrance. It is the perfect, perfect match. You see Miyaki, beautiful fragrance. Not something that I would always wear, but I, I love the fragrance of it as such. It's elegant, divine. It's not in your face. It's not overbearing. It, oh, it's just everything you would want in a beautiful fragrant orchid. Right, so this is going to be a classic cleanup where I'm going to remove the old support with 
probably taking off a third. No, I don't need to because the roots are dead. But if I have a root creeping into the support like I did here with the sellotape and everything, I'll just cut it off. Makes it easy when you've got new roots growing to be able to do that. Don't have to be so careful with preserving roots. And get this nasty support out because we don't need it. This orchid never needed a support. There we go. This orchid never needed a support, so I don't even have to put another one in. Cleaning up orchids is fun. I love it. Okay, we've got a climbing habit. So those were buried a little bit lower. We've got one that's gone. Oh, it's still hard. So you see burying pseudobulbs is not a problem in Lekka self-watering or semi-hydroponics. They just look nasty. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Am I going to take them off? They're brown. They look bad, but they're firm. So we'll go back with what we can see straight away. And also we'll pick out some of the moss, seeing as we're heading into winter, we won't be needing any moss and exposing gorgeous, gorgeous roots. Oh, I love it. Now these roots look dead, but they're still viable. I am still taking them off just because I want a clean start, fresh start for this orchid for the foreseeable future because then I can also get at the really dead ones in the back. I don't need to hold on to something that is going to be dead within about six months anyway. Oh, I'm so tempted to remove this, but I want my blooms. Anyway, we'll keep going. I have such beautiful roots right there. I want to take it off. I've decided I'm going to take off these back bulbs right here. The orchid comes first, but to get my secateurs in there without doing damage, I wonder. <laughs> oh, I don't like it. I don't like this at all, but now at least I can see what I'm doing. I don't like ripped cuts. <laughs> so yeah, okay, we, did, we got that done. And that may just have forfeited the blooms. Oh well. At least it won't forfeit the whole orchid. And it's been three years after all. Three years is a long time. It's the maximum that I push an orchid to remain in the same pot without checking the root system, cleaning up or doing anything of the sorts. So yeah. <laughs> Right, we may not get blooms out of her this year, but we certainly will have a very happy orchid for the foreseeable future in this pot. 99% sure, 1% disclaimer. Anything can happen in the orchid hobby, but <laughs> let me just say that I'm 99% sure that she's going to be very, very happy. I would prefer to get this entire sheath off here as well, but I'm not going to push it because I'm not as versatile. I don't have the, the right feel for this kind of delicate job with a glove on. Right, let's clean you up. Keeping that cinnamon away from those root tips. Fundamental. So I wet my paintbrush so I don't have this powder going everywhere. Even just minute traces of it. And then we're just gonna let her dry and then she gets her nice clean pot, which I have to clean up right now. <laughs> so as a reference, 
These are the old supports that I used to do with just plain wire. I straighten it with a drill, which really, really supports the structure even further. I have a video on that as well. I'll put up a card. But I then, to avoid rust, I wrap around sellotape all along the part that is going to be in the pot. And you can see that after three years, there's no rust, nothing. The sellotape is intact. It's not crunchy, crispy, falling apart, even though exposed to the elements and in water for such a long time. Meanwhile, I've switched to plastic coated wire, which is much more elegant. But yeah, that's how long my Kyoguchi Happy Field has been in her pot. Larger pot, big chunky roots, large leka, two microfibers in there, even though you might only see one, there's two. Because of the big chunky leka, but I want as much wicking in the pot as possible, thinking ahead to spring, summer next year to give this orchid the best chance of recovery and to be able to fatten up her pseudobulbs again. So big pot, two loops, large leka. If this was a big pot with fine roots and small leka, only one loop. That's plenty because there's more wicking efficacy with small leka. When it comes to the Kiyoguchi Happy Field, medium-sized roots, yeah, we could go with large leka, but I want her to also recover quickly. If she's going to bloom, then she needs all the help she can get. So I'm going with medium-sized roots, one loop, but I have small leka for her. So that's my reasoning behind the different leka sizes. Let's get them potted up. I'm not too concerned about Kyoguchi Happy Field, but I am concerned about my Epidendrum Stamfordianum here because of, yeah, I may need to put a support in that and stabilize her. So that's going to be fiddly. Let's get going. You see, normally I would want to have her already supported right now before I add even more lecker because I don't want all the abrasions and everything while I've got Lekka in the pot to go against the root tips. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. Checking her height now, because I'm gonna put the wire on first and then secure her to the support before putting Lekka in. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Sorry for that little bit of a hesitation there, but it's the thought process. Beautiful, if you can say such a thing well for me. We started out with hello, beautiful people. Thank you for being here on a beautiful day. And now we're gonna finish with beautifully cleaned up orchids. And I hope happy orchids for the next two or three years, especially dear old Stamfordianum here, because I'm expecting the roots to grow rather quickly. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I have not wrapped the wire around the pseudobulbs. I want them to plump up. So I've given them sort of a loose support. Actually, the orchid feels sturdy in here, but eh, with a breeze, you never know. Better safe than sorry. So not the individual pseudobulbs are wired. I want them to be able to plump up and we can observe that from here on in. And you may have noticed that I did not pot my Kyoguchi Happy Field right to the edge here. And that is because, um, yeah, we've got another eye here. And imagine, just imagine, Let's think positively. What if that activates because of the cut in the back? We can only hope. 
Next step is to see, maybe she will bloom, maybe she won't. But oh my goodness, I feel so much better to have her in a cleaner pot with cleaner lecker. Yes. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this little soiree of Orchid Pot Pourri. I enjoyed your company. You keep me focused. <laughs> Thank you. Have yourselves a beautiful day and please, please stay safe. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.